Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After securing our final impressions and fabricating the master casts, we have, have made a stabilized base plate from auto-polymerizing acrylic, stabilized with rubber base and a layer of tin foil in the manner that you are accustomed. We have then mounted the master casts on, the suitable, on a suitable articulator using jaw relationship records. After these casts have been mounted on the articulator, we are ready to start setting the anterior teeth. The anterior teeth that we are going to use for this exercise are TrueBite BioBlend 42G Shade 112 Plastic Anteriors. This particular mold and shade is as close uh, a replica to the patient's teeth as was possible. Setting the anterior teeth for an immediate denture allows us to duplicate as close as possible the anterior uh, arrangement of the patient's natural teeth, or it allows us to change uh, from that setup if the patient uh, desires a different look to his anterior teeth. The first step in setting anterior teeth for an immediate denture is to carefully mark with pencil the gingival sulcus area around the teeth. I'm marking the sulcus here on the labial, and I'm also marking the lingual gingival crevice so that when we remove these teeth from the stone cast, we can see exactly where the gingival area was. On the labial anterior area, I'm also going to mark a second line. In this particular case, approximately two millimeters apical from the gingival line that I drew. In the cuspid area, I'm going to move it a little bit higher than the two millimeters. In this line, simulates approximately the amount of contouring that we will need to do surgically on the patient's alveolar bone. This determination is uh, done from uh, several diagnostic aids. One, we use the perio probe to, to probe the pocket depth here to give us some indication of the height of the al alveolar bone. And we also use as a diagnostic tool the patient's radiographs so that we can see some bone level. The lines and the amount of stone that we remove from the cast is dictated, of course, by these diagnostic aids as to the level of the bone for each individual patient. I'm going to start here setting the maxillary uh, central incisor. And I'm going to remove this tooth on the stone cast with our uh, laboratory handpiece and burr. The burr that I'm going to use to cut the uh, tooth off is a uh, 56 straight handpiece burr. tooth on its labial aspect, and now I'm going to remove it down to our pencil line on the lingual. Now, you can see that I've removed the tooth uh, more or less flat with the two pencil lines that I have drawn. On the lingual, 
I do not want to remove any stone lingual to the pencil line that I have drawn. In the healing process, after these teeth have been surgically removed from the patient, the alveolar bone resorbs or changes from the buccal aspect to the lingual. But the ling this lingual plate of bone will remain pretty much intact as it is now. We do, however, contour the labial aspect of this bone. And to do that, I'm going to change burrs here to a uh, acrylic type of a burr and carefully reduce this stone cast up to our second pencil line. and carefully contour that bone, or the stone in this particular example, such as this. After I remove that tooth with our burr, I'm going to take a laboratory knife and carefully smooth that uh, surface as smooth as I can so that when the denture is processed on this cast, the inside portion of the denture will be smooth and there won't be any rough irregular areas. Now, I'm ready to set the replacement tooth in its place. Most anterior teeth need to be modified when they are being uh, set for a maxillary immediate denture. By holding the tooth from the side here, we modify it by carefully grinding the uh, neck of the tooth, the cervical aspect of this tooth and what we call hollow grinding it to allow us to get the tooth back as close to the ridge as possible. We do not shorten the tooth, but instead we hollow grind it leaving the full labial aspect of the tooth intact, but removing some of this uh, bulky uh, material here. And I think I can show you how we do that now. Now, as you can see, I have left intact the labial surface, the full labial length of uh, the full length of the labial surface. I've left that intact, but I've removed the lingual portion of the tooth to allow me to get the tooth back on the cast. I'm also going to remove this area down here a little bit. Now I think that tooth can be set in there very nicely. We take a very small portion of molten pink wax and we place it on the area that we have removed the stone tooth. We carefully set the replacement tooth in its proper place. Now I'm trying to place this tooth in the exact manner that it previously existed. Now after that tooth is set, Correctly, I'm going to take a little bit more molten wax 
and carefully loot the tooth to the stone, both on its lingual aspect and also the labial aspect. We need to look at this tooth in all planes, just as we do if this case were an edentulous cast and we were setting teeth. We make sure that the tooth is properly oriented like its original uh, tooth that we've just removed. After this tooth has been set, we will start uh, setting another tooth. For this example, it will be a little bit helpful to you to jump to the cuspid area uh, tooth and set that tooth instead of the lateral because it is easier to set teeth exactly uh, the way that the patient's natural teeth were if we alternate teeth instead of setting uh, the teeth straight one next to the other. So I'm going to remove the cuspid tooth here. After removing the cuspid tooth and modifying the ridge similar in a similar manner as we did the central incisor, we have set uh, the cuspid tooth. The cuspid tooth also has been hollow ground on its lingual aspect so that we can set the tooth in its proper relationship. After the tooth has been set, we carefully wax in the gingival area to simulate the natural con uh, contour of the gingiva uh, as it was for the natural tooth. We now can remove the lateral incisor. In the lateral incisor, we remove in a similar manner as the other two teeth. We need to be careful when we remove the lateral incisor not to uh, nick either the central incisor or the cuspid that we have previously set. We also need to make sure that we remove the stone in the interproximal area to ensure that that is nice and smooth. After preparing the cast from the lateral incisor and hollow grinding this tooth, again showing that we have maintained the entire labial length of the tooth, but we have removed some of the lingual aspect of the tooth, we now can set the lateral incisor. We will place some molten wax on this lateral incisor area. placing the lateral incisor in its approximate position. After the lateral incisor is positioned correctly, we again loot the tooth to the cast with molten wax. After the one side has been set, the opposite side can be set similarly. I'm going to lift up the incisal pin here so that you can see a little bit better what the anterior setup looks like. We have restored the shape, angulation, and uh, incisal edge contour of the natural teeth. We have also restored the gingival uh, crevice and, and uh, gingival cuff area in wax with our wax up. We can compare this to a cast, a duplicate cast of, of what the teeth looked like before they were uh, removed and set with replacement teeth. You can see that we have a very similar uh, aesthetic 
arrangement. After the anterior teeth have been set, we are then ready to start setting the posterior teeth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.